With the rise of AI authors, how do you prove that you are a human author? The way most authors do this is with their name and their photo. Your identity provides protection from being called a bot writer. But what if you use a pen name? Will AI bring an end to the age of the pen name? Find out in this episode of Novel Marketing, the longest-running book marketing podcast in the world. I'm Thomas Umstadt, Jr., CEO of Author Media, and this is the show for writers who want to build their platform, sell more books, and make a living writing books worth talking about. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast by clicking follow in your podcast app on your phone or clicking subscribe on YouTube. And while pen names are going out of style, there are some reasons why you might consider using one. So we're going to talk about the seven different reasons that authors use pen names and whether those reasons are any good in an era where your verifiable humanity has become a marketing asset. So let's talk about reason number one, which is to stay anonymous and avoid consequences. When Thomas Paine first wrote Common Sense, he used the pen name A Son of Liberty to avoid retribution from the English crown. He was afraid the king would hang him. (laughs) And as of 2006, this is the all-time best-selling American title, and it's still in print today. It's a very popular book, and it's excellent. I've read it. But here's the deal. Everyone knows who wrote Common Sense. Pen names as a source of confidentiality rarely work because someone talks, someone always talks, or someone follows the money, or someone notices the writing style, or the author's phone, which tracks their every activity, both online and offline, rats them out. It's really hard to think of a single person who is able to successfully stay anonymous after finding notoriety for their writing. It didn't work for the Unabomber, it didn't work for Vox Day, and it didn't work for Mark Twain. And it didn't work for Thomas Paine. (laughs) If you're hoping a pen name will protect you from scrutiny, consequences, or criticism, think again. Writing, good writing, requires courage. And if you lack the courage to put your name on the cover, you may lack the courage to write with clarity and specificity. The best protection from scrutiny and consequences is obscurity. But if your goal is obscurity, you have to ask yourself why you're writing in the first place. Pen names did a terrible job protecting authors from scrutiny before the age of AI. And in an age where our phones are always spying on us, it's only gotten worse. So if this is why you're using a pen name, writing may not be for you. The second reason why authors sometimes use pen names is to avoid reader bias. Back in the 1990s, Joanne Kathleen Rowling was convinced that fantasy readers were biased against female authors. So she went with a pseudo pen name, J.K. Rowling, to hide the fact that she was a woman. I say pseudo pen name because these were her real initials and her real last name. Men who write romance will sometimes do the same thing. They'll hide the fact that they're a man or even pick a female pen name. And I don't think readers are nearly as biased as authors think they are, but using initials did protect J.K. Rowling from knee-jerk reactions from readers who didn't know who she was. But, and this is important, once you taste success, any kind of success, readers will know who you really are. Everyone knows that J.K. Rowling is a woman, (laughs) and now she's stuck with everyone calling her J.K. rather than using her real name. I'm not convinced this is a good reason to pick a pen name in this age of AI authors. To hide your sex, you'll need to avoid using your photo, and with no photo and no real name, you start to look a lot like an AI author rather than a human author. The third reason why authors sometimes will pick a pen name is to simplify the spelling. Some names are easier to spell than others. Trust me, I get it. No one can spell Umstat correctly without seeing it first. I've had a $5 bet on this since I was in college, and no one has collected on the money. But back when things were on paper, an unusual spelling could be a real impediment. But unusual spellings are now an asset. 
Computers are much better at variant spellings. If you type in Thomas Umstadt, but spell it incorrectly, if you type that into Google, any near misspelling will still find me. In fact, Google will start to suggest the correct spelling as you type in my name. Also, unusual spellings can help, like I said, because you're more likely to grab the .com if you have an unusual name. You're also more likely to be the only author with that name, which can avoid confusion. The more common your name is, the more likely there is another author with your same name. So I think trying to simplify the spelling of your name is a terrible reason to use a pen name. The grass is always greener on the other side, and there's a lot of John Smiths wishing they had an unusual name like yours. The fourth reason why some authors use a pen name is to avoid confusion with a similar author. So that's the flip side of the third reason. So what do you do if another author has your same name? Well, this is a question I get a lot during our patrons-only Q&A episodes. This is where patrons will ask me live questions, and I'll answer them live. And they can attend live and ask questions. They can send in questions ahead of time and then listen to the recording. It's very flexible, but this is a common question. And I like it when people can come on live because it allows me to ask them follow-up questions. And there's three questions you need to ask yourself to answer this question. The first is, is the .com available? Whoever owns the .com has the high ground. There are three Thomas Umstads walking around, but I'm the only one who owns thomasumstad.com. It would be very hard for those other Thomases to push me off the top ranking on Google. The other question is, is the author still actively writing? Are they still alive? A dead author with your name is of less concern than an author actively putting out another book every year. Generally speaking, people are a little more forgotten every year. Your dead namesake is unlikely to suddenly hit the bestseller list, and that dead author will be less famous 10 years from now than they are today, while you, if you're doing things right, will be more famous. So this is a problem that solves itself. The third question I ask is, are you likely to be confused for your namesake? If you write sweet romance and your namesake writes academic books about anthropology, that is less concerning than if your namesake writes erotica. (laughs) That would be a much bigger problem. A living author with your name is one of the best reasons to use a pen name, but I recommend staying as close to your real life name as possible. For example, James J. Butcher writes urban fantasy. He uses the name James rather than Jim to reduce confusion with his dad, Jim Butcher, who also writes urban fantasy. If you're forced into a variant of your name or even a full pen name to avoid confusion, make sure to put your photo everywhere and make a point to be as personal as you can with your online presence to look as human as possible. This will become a real deficit you'll need to overcome in other areas. And one of those ways you can do that is lots of photos. I know you don't like how you look, but you're just going to have to get over that because everybody else thinks you look fine and it's more important for people to see you and know that you're a human. And it's hard to have good AI photos of the same person that are different, right? It's like AI can make a photo of someone, but right now it's weak at making dozens of photos of that person. So on your about page, perhaps have more than one photo of yourself or a photo of you and your family. The fifth reason why authors sometimes will pick a pen name is to avoid confusion with a villain. Some authors Google their name and find a namesake who has done terrible crimes. (laughs) The news articles often rank well on Google and you may find that all the top spots for your name is for some criminal. Now, assuming that the villain has been arrested and imprisoned, I don't think this is a reason to use a pen name. Most criminals are quickly forgotten and languish in obscurity. Now, if this trial is still ongoing, that criminal will likely continue to generate headlines. Now, this is still something that I think shouldn't push you into pen name world, but it will push you into learning search engine optimization world (laughs) because criminals don't typically own their own .coms. They don't typically have websites that they're trying to optimize. So all you're really trying to push out of those top spots are some news articles that aren't typically very popular after the week they were published. If you're wanting to learn more about search engine optimization, the blog version of this episode will link 
to a whole episode I have on search engine optimization for author websites. I also have a whole module on search engine optimization in my course, Obscure No More. So this is something that you can learn and it's something you'll need to focus on, but it's very doable. That said, there are exceptions. If your name is Ted Kaczynski, you'll probably want to use a pen name. (laughs) So eventually the villain is so famous that they poison their name forever. The sixth reason why authors sometimes use a pen name is to avoid confusion with a celebrity. So this is the kind of flip side of the villain problem. For example, Tom Holland is a famous author of Roman history. In my world, as a history nerd, I hear him referenced, quoted, and interviewed more than I hear about the actor who portrays Spider-Man. But for most people, when they hear the name Tom Holland, they think Spider-Man. Now, this is what's interesting is that the author came first. Tom Holland started writing before the actor was born. But since the actor became famous, the historian has made no effort to change his name to avoid confusion. His latest book is not by Thomas Holland, for instance. And there's a lot to be said about standing your ground when it comes to branding. And I think having the same name as a famous actor or musician is less of a problem than having the same name as another author, because people will assume that you're a different person. And celebrities come and go. It's very rare for celebrities to stay famous. Most of them are here today and are forgotten tomorrow. Authors actually have much more staying power in the minds of readers than celebrities do with moviegoers. Don't let some actor push you away from the name your parents gave you. That said, there are exceptions. If you go by Tom Cruise, You may consider using Thomas Cruise as a pen name when you publish your book because some actors really are that famous. Now, there have always been celebrities and namesakes, and I think it's okay to tweak your name to avoid confusion. And that's what I would do. I would just tweak it. I, you know, go by Thomas instead of Tom, go by Jim instead of Jack. But I would recommend sticking as close to your actual name as possible so you can look as human as possible. The seventh reason to pick a pen name, and the most popular these days, is to keep the also bots clean on Amazon. <laughs> so this is a pen name as a metadata management tool. And I'll have a whole episode to metadata. It's one of those things that separates professional authors from amateurs. Professionals know about metadata, and they think about it a lot. And amateurs don't know what metadata is. So this is not the episode to explain metadata but I will link to it in the show notes for this episode. But in the rapid release indie world, a common reason to create a pen name is to keep your books separate across different genres. So for example, Joanna Penn uses the pen name JF Penn to keep her writing books separate from her thriller books. So when she writes about writing, she's writing with the name Joanna Penn, and when she's writing thrillers, she's using JF Penn. Thriller readers don't want to see a bunch of books about writing, but the writing readers might want to see what Joanna Penn, the famous writing coach, what kind of books she's written. Uh, So it's interesting one-way mirror there in terms of branding. For most authors, maintaining two pen names for metadata purposes is a mistake because they're just not writing enough books to justify it. But there are exceptions. There are times when having multiple names is a good idea. So let's talk about some of those exceptions. One is you write at two different steam levels. So some authors want to write both erotica and sweet romance. And for this kind of author, a pen name helps avoid surprising readers and getting surprise negative reviews. And I actually see this quite a bit in the romance world where romance authors will have their clean romance name and their steamy romance name. Another reason why you might want to have a pen name is if you can write fast enough to keep two different reader bases happy. And this is actually a reason why most authors shouldn't have a pen name, because they don't write fast enough. (laughs) If you can just keep one group of readers happy, you should be good. Another reason why some authors will have multiple names is because they write both religious and secular books, and those audiences are mutually exclusive. And it's not only common for people to write both religious and secular books. What is uncommon is for those audiences to be mutually exclusive. So, for instance, Scott Adams creates the popular Dilbert cartoon. He's a very famous humorist, and he also writes 
religious books, the most famous of which is called God's Debris, where he kind of shares his metaphysical views on the world. And he publishes that book under the name Scott Adams because he markets his religious views to the same people who read his comic books. So it's really only a good idea when it's mutually exclusive. And occasionally that is the case. Another reason why you might want multiple pen names is because you write about writing. Readers don't want to read books about writing, and they don't want to read books by people who write about writing. It makes you sound academic and boring. They want to read books by thriller authors or romance authors, not by writing teachers. And that brand doesn't make you more appealing in the eyes of a reader. There's, there may be other exceptions, and if you can think of one, do leave a comment below this episode, and I might add your exception to the uh, later versions of the blog version of this episode. If I, if I think it's a really good exception, I'll, I'll add it to the list. If this is you and you have multiple pen names because you write really fast and you want to write in multiple genres, I would not try to hide behind those pen names. Be very obvious about who you are and who your and use your human photo on both websites, right? Don't have this is the AI version of me and this is the human version of me. No, no, no. In the about page of your website, have your photo and mention your other pen name. And on the about page of that website, link back to your other website. Have the sites link back and forth unless you know you write about writing and you don't want your thriller website to mention your writing. That's okay. So you might have a reason for a one-way mirror, but most of the time I think the sites should link to each other to avoid confusion. And I have an example of this done well uh, with Camille Elliott's About page. So Camille Elliott is the pen name for Cami Tang. And on the About page, you can see her photo. She, Camille Elliott is her Regency Romance pen name. And on her About page, she has a photo of her wearing a Regency Romance dress, which is brilliant because that really communicates this is a real human person <laughs> because if you asked AI to make a Regency romance uh, photo of an author, it would likely set that person in a, a Regency time period, <laughs> not, not be a photograph. Uh, so while uh, Cammie Elliott has a pen name, the about page makes it very clear that she's a human and that these pen names are to reduce confusion. So let me know what you think. Are there other reasons to have a pen name? Do you disagree that pen names are going out of fashion because of the rise of the AI authors? Let me know in the comments on authormedia.social or below this episode. Our featured patron today is Darlene Corbett, author of Visible. Widowed, childless, and estranged from family, Rachel wonders if she'll ever have a second chance at love. When her own therapist suggests she get back in the game, she enrolls in dance classes to learn the tango. Romantic, passionate, and dramatic, the tango embodies everything missing in Rachel's life. But as Rachel becomes entwined with Michael, her handsome dance partner, she's forced to face her own brokenness. Can Rachel find the courage to let go of her past? Or will her insecurities and fears continue to hold her back? Find out in Visible by Darlene Corbett. And Darlene, thank you so much for being a patron. Thank you for your support that helps keep this podcast on the air. I appreciate it now more than ever. Why? Well, because we are now in our third trimester. That's right. Baby number four is just around the corner. And my poor wife started her third trimester just before the Texas summer officially started. Of course, summer in Texas has unofficially been going on all year, <laughs> but the heat of the summer is now here and our air conditioner has been set to numbers to which have never been seen before. <laughs> and so I'd just like to thank all of the patrons who support the show, you support our family, and I really, really appreciate it. The Novel Marketing Podcast is a production of AuthorMedia.com. Audio engineering is by William Umstadt. The blogification is by Shauna Lettler. And to read the blog version of this episode, visit AuthorMedia.com slash 423. I'm Thomas Umstadt Jr. saying thank you for listening and live long and prosper. <laughs>